So what we can do now in the next uh, 10 minutes or 15 minutes, we're going to show you uh, the results of what you would uh, experiment if you follow the step-by-step -step worksheets of the training series of 2019. So we did a course in June, we did a course in October, and both courses used the same example, that is this Lulesh microkernel MK, that is a simplification of the coral benchmark Lulesh for, the, for training purposes. Essentially, there are complete routines that are exactly the same of Lulesh, but we have simplified parts of the real code just to allow, to make the example more uh, handy for, for training. Okay, so here what you will see is that the code is now has more complicated set of routines, more lines of code. This is real example where you have iterations, you have different types of scientific parameters that you need to understand how to run and how they impact on the performance or the problem size of the code that you are running. And finally, you will see that we can get, in this case, up to 25x on the GPU instead of the slowdown as we saw in the 80 max example. So before discussing the sample, the results, Javier, I will again stop sharing and let you do the conduct the demonstration. If I do ready, if you are ready for that. Sure, let's go. So I will share again. So you should be seeing again uh, the new machine client and the Power Trainer, just as we left it before, which was with the 80 Max. So I will switch now to another uh, project, which is the Lulish MK. Uh, here, if you attended the, to this ago, the demo, uh, you can get the, this code and many others by uh, installing the examples here from the help menu. Okay, so among Lulish, you will get uh, other examples. I will just show you here. Uh, this is uh, where I installed all those samples. So in the demo, we also showed uh, some of these uh, check examples. And the Thai and 80 MOOCs you should be familiar with, which are part of the Power Trainer Quick Start, which will help you uh, get to know all the features in Trainer. But also we bundle uh, some other code, as is the case for Lodge. Okay. So here I have a couple of versions that I did today before, but the original code is this one over here that will be the only one that you will have available when you install that, uh, this sorry for um, uh, Power Trainer. So uh, this is the Lulish MK file. You see on the right that I have uh, different versions, please uh, never mind them for now. And as Manuel was uh, explaining, this is a little bit, let me show, just hide the console. Uh, this is a little bit uh, bigger than the codes we have seen before. This is uh, a micro kernel, uh, but it's uh, way more complex. Uh, so I, I've seen some pragmas there, which means that uh, I'm not in the original version, so I will just restore it. Okay. So we did some uh, profiling, for instance, with gprof. We will see that the hotspot for this function is here on loop uh, 190. We can also run uh, PW loops for this tool. Uh, sorry for this source file. And you will see a lot of loops. Just too big a font here. But uh, the one I was talking about is this one right here at line 190, which has a sparse reduction and it, it constitutes either a Cindy or a multi opportunity, and it is uh, auto parallelizable by uh, power. So we can do that with trainer. And I will just try that straight away for opening P, G, CPU, and multi threading. Let's click parallelize. And 
you see that now the usual parallel and four directives are inserted and then a bunch of atomic updates. Okay. So let's uh, run this. Let me see what I have here. What I have. Uh, well, I will just leave there the open the offload flags for later. They won't uh, make any difference now since we are uh, paralyzing for the GPU. And I will just remove this just in case, although it shouldn't hurt. But okay. So let's build it. It was okay. And uh, okay. I have messed with the environment after loading the yeah, so I will just open a new section real quick. Sorry about that. Let's see how I feel there. These are the modules I usually load. And then I will look for some. Make your uh, window bigger, please. Ah, uh, sure. It will just be one second. <laughs> Let me uh, just ask for the location and then I will. But I will just to try to find. Sorry? Yeah. yeah. If you can't get a node, um, use the reservation node. You'll get it for sure. All right. It should be big enough. Do your bug command and then add to dash dash reservation. Uh, what was the PW tools to underscore GPU and then space dash capital A space M3502 3502 right 02 and dash Q, space dash Q shared okay then, well, then should I remove the interactive and that's sure yeah, remove the to share. Okay. Thank you for that. Sorry for not having that uh, prepared. Okay, so I will uh, now again. Yeah, trainer should load the project that we have opened before. Uh, just to remind you, I restored the original and parallelized right away for OpenMP CPU multi threading. So now, hopefully, I can build around this. Again, disregard this, it shouldn't affect right now since we are going for multi threading. And let's see what speed up uh, we got. I forgot uh, to tell you before when we were doing uh, the experiments for multi threading that I have allocated, maybe you notice it now, uh, just for uh, threads on the SR command. So that's the maximum multi threading that we will get, as you manually presented in the results for there are up to four threads. That's the maximum value that we can use for open and pin on threads. So that was kind of implicit there, but uh, so you know, four is the maximum number of threads. So uh, let's see what the results are with this version. And there's a lot of information here. Uh, the number you are looking for is this one right here, 80, uh, sorry, 38 seconds. Uh, it's also important, this couple of values here, to see that the result is correct. Every time we parallelize, we have to ensure that the numerical results are still correct. So that's what the checksums are doing here. So I did not uh, run the sequential version. Let's do that now. Now we have uh, the reference for the parallelized version with multi-threading. So I can just run this version now. I have to make this a bit smaller. Um, okay, so it's running as it is reporting here. This will take a while, probably about it should take over 40 seconds.
So uh, while it finishes, it's taking a while. We will uh, then do a couple of versions for uh, GPU using either OpenMP and OpenCC, just like we did before. But this time for this example. So it took over one minute, not uh, twice as slow, but almost from 38 to 67. Okay, so uh, now we know that the multi threading version with uh, four threads is uh, quite faster. So let's see what we can get from the GPU. So let's start with using, oh, using sorry, OpenMP uh, with GPU and offloading. And you will see that again, as before, we have a bunch of uh, missing uh, information that we need to provide. So actually in this case, uh, what we should do if you took a, uh, take a look at the, at the worksheet is to provide that information while parallelizing. So in this case, uh, we want to perform uh, explicit uh, privatization here. We will use that strategy. So we need to do that over the domain variables. And now we have to add the ranges for these variables. Okay. So this is still fighting with the keyword layout. There's a typo in the last one, domain M. Right, thank you. Is it open also up? Yeah. Okay, thanks. Nice guys. Here is the same range, which I just copied, and the same here. Okay, so we have uh, all that privatization information down there for us. And then the critical sections updating those variables is similar to the uh, privatization strategy that we did before. Uh, so the issue is that I it is for the CPU. I forgot when I went back to the dialog to choose CPU. So I'll type this again. Sorry about that. Okay, so here we have it, same information, but this should now be for offloading. missing a couple more pieces of information here, which is the ranges for this. Let me just take a quick peek uh, of these ranges in the previous version that I prepared before. These are also in the worksheet. If you have it handy, you can uh, take a look there. I will have to resort to the worksheet actually. I think it's note slash list, but max note list, okay. Zero, max note list. Zero. Javier is typing, just let you know 
some work in progress for future versions of uh, trainer and analyzer, we are improving uh, the internal support to have a more precise description of array ranges. Whenever in your code, the, the loop that you want to parallelize to have an, array, an access to an array of a 1D array, a 2D array, a 5D array, what we, you need is to describe the range of elements that are accessed in each of the dimensions. So we are making progress in, in extracting the information about the uh, uh, access patterns from the source code to improve this part of the technology so that you don't have to type in all the array ranges of all the arrays for the data transfers. Just some of them will be automatically filled in for you and others, whenever the information cannot be extracted uh, statically from the code, you will need to type it in. So we will try to guide you to know exactly what arrays or ranges you need to type, not all of them, okay? This is one of the internal developments that we are doing. Uh, okay, so uh, second here. Yeah, it seems like I had some typo, so I used I loaded another version. This one is uh, for uh, multi-threading. I was looking. I will execute it just uh, for comparison, but this is not the GPU that we were looking for. It's the same. I mean, I did the uh, privatization strategy for the domain variables. That we entered before. I just don't want to waste too much time with uh, typos. Here you can see that uh, parallel where uh, generates C code for you in allocating the memory, malloking the amount of memory that you need for each of the private copies of the array that you need for each thread. And again, we do a uh, Best effort here. Uh, once we, uh, this finishes, Javier, can you, for instance, restore the original version and use the explicit privatization strategy on GPU, or, sorry, on CPU, without in, um, uh, typing any um, array range, just explicit domain MFX. You can even combine atomic and explicit with different variables. That is possible as well. When you parallelize, now you try to compile, and you can see the errors. So the, the code is intentionally not compilable because we are not, we know that the code is not complete because there is missing information about what array range needs to be malloced or what are the size of its thread private copy. So here Javier is highlighting the differences. So whenever you input in the parallelization dialog, the name of the array and between brackets, the square brackets, the number of elements or the range that needs, needs to be allocated, that, inform that information is uh, injected in the parallel world technology and in the generation phase, we fill in these pieces of information that were not automatically available. Similar to what you saw before with data transfers, data movement, there were clauses with array ranges missing. So when you typed the array range in the parallelization dialog, the same piece of information was injected in the data movement uh, clauses. So the same information can be injected in different parts of the generated code by parallel work, depending on the parallelization transformation strategy that you have selected. I think that this is clear in this example. And the code is intentionally not compilable because it is not correct. We miss information that you need to provide to the tools or you need to type it yourself. Okay, so again, what we did uh, so far, uh, it was first uh, a, an atomic uh, version for OpenMP multi-threading, and now we did an explicit gravitation version. Uh, first with, which was this restore version, uh, adding the ranges there in the array ranges of uh, input box of the parallelization options and now without entering that information just entering the name of those variables that should be uh, privatized in this case these three domain variables and like Manuel just pointed out it will insert some invalid codes over the compilation phase if you input that 
information in the dialog, then you will have this version with the proper ranges field. So it's a working version that you can already execute. Okay, so let's try again. Uh, see if I don't misspell too much this time. Uh, paralyzing for the GPU. Let's go with open ACC. Uh, a little bit as it is. And again, what we have are some missing ranges up here. So you have the information in the worksheet, but it will just fill this. And again, hopefully my fingers won't mess with me. Max node list here. Yeah. Well, Javier is typing some more comments about the generated code. You can see that uh, parallel world uh, uses the data pragma of OpenACC uh, and fills in different types of clauses. You have copy in, copy out, and copy. Copy in moves data from the CPU to the GPU memory. So parallel world identifies all the arrays that are used in the loop. Some arrays are read-only. Those arrays that are read-only, you only need to transfer them from CPU and GPU memory. And you don't need to transfer them back from the GPU memory to the CPU memory. So all the read-only arrays that are used are uh, added to the copy-in clause. Whenever the array is output only, it needs to be only allocated on the GPU. The computation is done on the GPU and that data is copied back and transferred from the GPU memory to the CPU memory. This is specified by copy out. Whenever the array is input and output, as happens in reductions, whenever you have a sparse reduction, you have an array that is read, read, and updated with a sum operation and the result is written in the same array, in, a, in the same memory location. So the array itself is input, output, read, and write during the execution of the loop. So that array needs to be copied from the CPU to the GPU memory. Computation is performed on the GPU and copied back from the GPU memory to the CPU memory. And this is done in the copy clause. So parallel where identifies what arrays are for copy in, for copy out, or for copy clauses. And this is similar to OpenMP where you have the corresponding ones that are map to, this is copy in, map from, this is copy out, map to from, this is copy. So the syntax is different, but essentially the meaning from the point of view of data movement is the same in the two uh, open MP and open ACC standards. Okay. I know, did you finish typing, Javi? Uh, yeah. Uh, now we well we enter all the information. I took the chance to actually prepare the code. Uh, here we have the flags used for building. Um, I have changed from minus f, f uh, sorry f openmp to f open acc since this is an uh, acc version. This uh, is okay as it is. It works both for openmp and open acc. The rest of the flags. Uh, I've also added f run so that the, the code does actually run on the GPU. And we have a couple more of uh, steps that we need to do. So this uh, loop that will be uploaded is invoking this function over here. So we need to actually tell OpenACC to run that, uh, to create a version of that, uh, that uh, function also in the GPU. So uh, we need to add an ACC declare sorry pragma acc routine sec declare is for uh, openmp i'm trying to copy and paste here without, okay so that's the directive uh, we also needed to add it i think it's uh, to this one it's another difference from simple kernels like atmax where all the code is complete in the loop body itself but in real codes, we have complex formulas, formulations to code in our programs. So we finally end up splitting the computation of the loop body in different functions that are called at runtime. So whenever you try to parallelize on the GPU, one of the requirements is that you need to instruct the 
the, comp the GPU compiler to create uh, CPU versions as well as GPU versions for the functions that are called at runtime from the GPU, from the loop of loaded to the GPU. So this is again, something that you usually don't see in simple codes that are self-contained, but we see in real codes that are complicated from the point of view of the number of functions and the structure of the code. So this is one of the features that we explicitly coded in Lulish MK example. So as you see, uh, our loop calls this Hourglass Force function that in turn calls the workload function. Both of them need to be declared uh, to be uploaded to the uh, GPU. Okay, so now we should have both the compiler flags and the code ready. Let's see if we have made any mistake and this runs faster in the uh, GPU. Again, we are using GCC. So do you remind that uh, PDI or as it is called now, the HPC SDK uh, will probably perform better. We can try that maybe later. Okay, so uh, 29 seconds, barely. Uh, before it was on the multi-threaded version, 38. So it's like uh, 10 seconds better. And uh, remember that the sequential version was uh, almost 70 seconds. So this is quite a speed up already for uh, this code. So Manuel, do you want me to try some other version, maybe the HPC SDK, see if the compiler works any better or any questions? If there are questions, we can reply now. If not, in the meantime, I think it's uh, it's worth, as Helen suggests, to use the compiler recommended for performance. So if you can do a, a test with uh, PGI and PGI compiler. And let's see if it makes any difference for OpenACC, for instance. Okay, so uh, first we load the module that contains the compiler. And now I will enter manually uh, the flux, which we can see. Okay. See if there's anything uh, strange that I need. Again, I need to relaunch trainer since we changed the path environment variable so that it can find the compiler binary. So it is an MPC is telling us that it found some parallel code that it generated the parallel instructions and now hopefully we can run it. And it was way faster <laughs> than the previous version. So it's less than three seconds. And before it was, uh, I don't remember anymore, uh, 16, something like that. While well, the original was over one minute. So this we is can show that the, the final table. Yeah. This was quite an improvement over GCC for OpenACC, uh, as we expect. Great. So with the same parallelization strategy generated once, just into the compiler, there is a lot of difference in performance. Yeah. I think that also interesting, uh, it will be interesting to show how to change the number of threads on the multi-threaded version or the data scoping listing of variables so that you can see the patterns that are uh, detected by parallel world technology behind the scenes. That can be okay, shown. The, the last part, what did you say? Uh, the data scope, I think it is the, in the parallelization dialogue, the data scope yeah. in advanced dialogue. So uh, we can show for a uh, given loop uh, the information about the data scoping that we can, sorry, I'm looking for line 190. 
So here we have a button that says that is scoping. This is equivalent to invoking PW loops uh, slash slash data scoping. This is data scoping analysis where you can see that for a given loop, we analyze all of the variables that are used there, what kind of variable they are, if they are array, if it's a scalar variable, the usages, whenever it's only read, uh, read from, with a written or it's a write only variable, whenever it's a temporary, and which patterns do, do we detect. So here you've, you've been seeing that we uh, are. are sorry, uh, paralyzing and sparse reduction for the domain variables uh, you've been seeing uh, the whole time. And then you see the clauses, the default clauses that we can provide for both OpenMP and OpenACC. Again, this is also available in Analyzer from the command line through the PW loops uh, tool. Anything, any remarks you want to to give here, Manuel, or should I show the OMP, OMP non threads environment variable how to set it from trainer? Just probably a brief, brief remark is that for the sparse reduction patterns, uh, what they can see is that uh, we do not show the concrete implementation because, in this case, if, if you remember, the sparse reduction can be implemented in two different ways using the atomic approach or the explicit privatization approach. So the atomic approach uh, requires atomic protection and the explicit privatization approach in OpenAP also requires some atomic protection. The difference being that atomic in the atomic privatization strategy is proportional to the number of loop iterations, which usually runs from thousands or millions of iterations, while in the explicit privatization approach, the number of atomic operation is proportional to the number of threads. Typically, 10 threads, 20 threads for millions of iterations. So there is no easy way or compact way to express this in this dialogue. So we summarize this by saying that both in OpenMP and OpenACC, you need to manage this with shared anatomic or with copy anatomic, just to express some of the building blocks that are used in the implementation of the two parallelization strategies. Okay, whenever, for instance, for the gamma or numelum scalar array, whenever the implementation is clear, we just write and show the implementation shared or copy in, copy out implementation on OpenMP or OpenACC. This is maybe what requires a little bit of explanation. So finally, I think we can show we are running way out of time, of the expected time, just because we are trying to show more interesting features while we uh, wait for questions or people to uh, begin to try the tools. So I would just suggest to finish with a demonstration <laughs> how to change the number of threads used in OpenMP on the CPU from the UI of of trainer and finish the demonstration at that point. That would leave us one hour, one hour and a half for final free work by the attendees. Also, uh, I want to remark that uh, you have the glossary available for some of the terms uh, that we were discussing here, since trainer is uh, intended for uh, learning. So for instance, we were talking here about uh, a sparse uh, reduction that for now. So there it is. And you can have seen some of the definition here of what a spark reduction is and why it is uh, useful and how to parallelize it. Okay. So uh, back to the open ACC example. I will just restore this right here. So uh, we are running it implicitly with, uh, well, we have to change this here back again. I'll try to do this with, uh, see if it works fine with MBC. Uh, implicitly, we are running this with uh, four threads, which is the maximum number of threads that I have available since my allocation command requested. Uh, so, so this should be running with those uh, four available threads. So this took 
14 seconds. Um, from here, from the project configuration, clicking advanced, you can set any uh, environment variable. It's the more common setting being the o OMP NAM sorry, NAM threads. Let's try for instance with two instead of four. And then we will try with one and see if it's equivalent to the sequential version. So we are running it again. Let's compare that with the 14. And then set it to one and see if it's uh, equivalent to running the sequential version. So here it's more or less the same with two threads. So let's see if with one, I think I open in threads. Oops, okay. We could also add some print to see what the value actually is. Perhaps the run command is running a different version of the code. Uh, I shouldn't. So, something strange about it. And Okay, let's resort back to PCC just in case, but I'm sure we have the same. Okay. We have the same issue that, as before with the environment. Uh, we have to uh, reset everything. You can, you can try it on a CPU mode. Sorry, sorry. I don't have CPU node because you're doing the CPU um, test running setting the moment. So, okay, let me let you know. It's, we want actually to change uh, the load, the, the model, sorry, that I'm loading. Right. Um, you can try it on a, uh, just for simplicity, do it on the logging node, just for a small. Oh, logging node is not good for performance comparison. So, do you want to ask Alec? Um, Okay. Count module purge. Do you module list? Do you have? Let's see if it you, it didn't module purge, right? Uh, no, I didn't. Okay, so do you want to ask Alec? Let me just read it, the command for you. Do you want me to module purge or not? Module list. Uh, no, I just want to see you didn't purge. Okay. The, the, the clean uh, logging node. And we do it um, on the side, right? So this node, a GPU node? The CPU, right? You're trying. To change okay. so, so, so yeah, uh, remove this reservation. We don't have a reservation now. It's okay. actually you can just type. Uh, let, me, let me just type. Sure. That's Alec dash capital C. Um, has one. Well. Okay, now okay, now is easier to get. Okay, now uh, dash capital N one dash T does the same. Dash T uh, one at a time. Yeah, dash Q. Interactive. Yeah, that's it. Okay. okay what else did I do? Oh, dash Q. Dash oh. capital A M thirty five O two. I don't think you need that. I'm in. Uh... Oh, oh yeah. Do a module unload CGPU. If you load it to CPU, module, can you do modulus? Yeah, module unload CGP and yes, Lauren. Then do the same. As Alec. The S Alex should work now. Well, I still have this uh, GCC compiler. Hopefully, it is it is okay. Yeah, I could have to use the I could have to use the uh, peer peer GM GNU, I guess. Uh, but, uh, okay. Yeah, if you do that, you get the nearest GPC. Otherwise, you get the system default GCC for this test. 
Okay, so now we build uh, properly and we have, I will just remove the run just in case. And I was looking for the environment variable, which is one, so this should be sequential. Let's check if everything is fine right now. So a sequential or a pure open MP code on the CPU side, S1 is not recommended because it has overhead. Mm -hmm. Right. Actually, I guess the, that uh, KNL for a single node will actually be much slower than... It is very slow, yeah. Yeah. So we don't go with threading. Yeah, with two threads versus four threads of like... And actually now we could go uh, higher than just four threads, right? Eight with 16 or... <laughs> okay, I think we'll just talk this was over. <laughs> Uh, the input size smaller, problem. Well, the idea here was just to show different settings of OMP and threads, see uh, what the results would be with different number of threads, which uh, as expected. Uh, for this problem, at least, the more threads we should get faster times. Perhaps you can use yes, by your just a very simple example to show this feature. Change it in the, uh, <laughs> yeah. the round window, round configuration, just then we slot number thread, then eight out out. Sorry, say again, uh, you want to decrease the problem size or what, what we are suggesting? I was suggesting uh, instead of in advanced settings for OMP num threads, you could also add number threads in your run command line. Oh, yeah. Well, it should work all the same, but my concern here is that uh, it is just too big a problem for, for this node, maybe. In the meantime, do we have any questions or something that we should address while we do this experimentation? I think uh, I do not see more questions in the live channel, but we could just open up while you're running and you can just uh, showing using the mining, but people can start using the reserve nodes to continue working on the homework if, if you want to do more today. We will be here until 12 to it's a, like office hour setting. So feel free to drop in, drop out and uh, come back and ask questions. From your side, it's, I was suggesting also change uh, problem size to a little bit smaller so you can see it around quicker. Perhaps what I can do is, as this is taking a while, <laughs> um, let me share the screen just to finalize with the summary of the experimentation that we have prepared for today, apart from all of these new experiments that we can do. 
So essentially, we were in the village code. We have this can profile it and see that we have many functions consuming a lot of the execution time, many of them with millions of invocations and a very small execution time per invocation, and some of them with a small number of invocations and higher uh, execution time. Uh, we know how to validate it. There's ex sequential execution time in our experiments before these office hours was around 70 seconds for the setup of the software and the setup of the hardware platform on, on Cori. And these are the experiments that we did. This corresponds to the information that we provided in the training course of October 2019, last year. But again, we validated that more or less all of these times are still valid. So here what you can see is that the sequential version takes around 70 seconds. You can see the checksum so that we can, in all the our runs, always remember to validate that the result is numerically correct. Then we have these uh, versions in, in the OpenMP execution on the multi-core CPU for four threads. And you can see that we can get up to roughly eight x or two x faster. But in the course, we also explore applying OpenMP multi-threading not only to the sparse reduction loop, but also to the other 11 opportunities that we had in the code. So paralyzing not only the main hotspot, but also other parts of the code can speed up significantly your applications. And in this case, we achieved up to almost 4x on the CPU. And then we did uh, some experiments on the GPU side. <clears throat> With the uh, version that you saw there, uh, here, the atomic implementation. With GCC, we got 3x speed up. And with PGI, we saw up to 25x speed up. The same parallelization strategy, the same piece of code, just recompiling with one compiler support uh, recommended for performance, as NERSC recommends in their, in their information for the users. And then we had other experiments with other implementations of the uh, other possible versions of the Lulis MK where we combine some loops parallelized and offloaded to the GPU with other loops parallelized on the CPU side. So somehow we could get uh, some performance out of the CPU, multi-threading and GPU. So you can make a lot of experiments and combinations with 12 parallelization opportunities with the different patterns and with several parallelization strategies for each uh, opportunity and its pattern. So you can imagine many experiments that you can do with all the, the power of the, with the help of the parallel tools to help you to code faster and safely more versions of the different loops of your applications. So we really hope that you find all of this information interesting and, and that you can uh, use it in practice in the part three of this uh, training series for this year with a CPIC application or with your own code. So we encourage you to either use CPIC or to um, use your own code. We will be there to help you to get started with the parallel tools on, on Cori. So we are really excited and willing to help you to get started with that. So this is essentially what we wanted to present for you today with the demonstration part of the homework that we suggested doing uh, during these days. So you have more days ahead to continue doing this homework before the part three um, session next week on Wednesday. I think. So that's it. I will stop sharing now. And as Helen, Helen, you can take over. We will be here just waiting for people to ask uh, questions.